The Arctic is disappearing. In just a few years, the North Pole could see its first ice-free summer in the last 125,000 years. But a bold new experiment might turn back the clock. Scientists are refreezing the Arctic. If they succeed, they could save the North Pole. But if they fail, they could trigger unforeseen disasters. So, which way would things go? Well, here's some backstory. Deep in the Arctic, temperatures drop so low that metal cracks and winds scream across the ice. In winter, it's minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit on average. But despite the seemingly extreme cold, it's actually melting, warming two to three times faster than the rest of the planet. Now, ice is like Earth's natural mirror. It reflects sunlight back into space, keeping the planet cool. When it melts, it exposes the dark ocean underneath. The ocean absorbs sunlight instead of reflecting it, and it spreads all across the planet. This warms the planet even faster, melting even more ice. It's a vicious cycle, and if it continues, we'll reach a point where the ice won't come back. That thick, ancient ice that has covered the North Pole for thousands of years is already 95% gone. It's been disappearing since the 1980s. The ice that remains there now is thin and fragile. And when it disappears, it will trigger a dangerous chain reaction. Meanwhile, a group of researchers from a UK startup called Real Ice is out there trying to slow down or even reverse the melting of the Arctic. The project takes place in a tiny frozen village in Canada called Cambridge Bay. Real Ice wants to break the vicious cycle. And here's their plan. First, they drill through the existing ice and place an underwater pump beneath it. Then they pump seawater onto the ice surface, where it quickly freezes into an extra thick layer. Finally, they remove snow from the ice, which usually acts like a blanket, preventing further freezing. After that, ice keeps growing, stronger, thicker, and harder to melt. It's a simple idea inspired by nature itself. Ice naturally forms this way in some Arctic regions, but now scientists want to do it on a massive scale. So far, it appears to be working. Between January and May 2024, they covered around 44,000 square feet of ice, and it became 20 inches thicker on average. And in November 2024, they started a new round of tests. In the first 10 days of the trial, the ice was already 4 inches thicker. Now they'll return in May 2025 to check out how things are going. They think it's going to get between around 16 to 31 inches of it during the Arctic winter. It's a small start, admittedly, but if they can prove it works, their plan is to expand across an area more than twice the size of California, about 386,000 square miles of ice. And they're not stopping there. The big idea is to send in 500,000 underwater drones, powered by clean energy, to automate the entire process. These drones would drill holes, pump water, and refreeze the ice without human intervention. But not everyone is convinced. Some scientists think this whole idea is a disaster waiting to happen. First, they point out that saltier ice, the one from seawater pumped onto it, melts faster in the summer. So if this new ice melts too quickly, we could end up making the situation worse. Some of them also think this is a dangerous distraction from the core problem, like treating the symptoms instead of the root causes. Besides, making a small patch of ice thicker is one thing. But doing this across the entire Arctic? That's another challenge entirely. Another thing they're worried about is the ecosystem. The Arctic is one of the most fragile ecosystems on Earth. Changing ice thickness could affect marine life, disrupt algae growth, and impact the food chain in ways we don't fully understand. There's also the question of money. Real Ice estimates that refreezing the entire Arctic will cost about $5 to $6 billion per year. Who's paying for this? Right now, they're self-funded with some investors backing them. But eventually, they hope that countries, global funds, and even corporations will finance the project. Real Ice argues that doing nothing could be far worse. If we don't act, we could lose the Arctic within our lifetime. That could at least help to buy more time to fix the planet. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Now, the idea of saving the Arctic ice isn't new. Over the years, scientists have suggested some pretty wild plans to stop the melting. In 2017, there was the initial wind-powered pump plant. Physicist Stephen Desch proposed installing about 10 million wind-powered pumps in the Arctic. 
these pumps would pull seawater up onto the ice, kind of like real ice. It would freeze in the cold winter months, creating a thicker ice layer. The biggest problem is that someone would have to run this entire show. And what happens if something goes wrong? In 2018, there was the glass beads plan, which was supposed to start in 2020s. A team called the Arctic Ice Project suggested covering the Arctic with tiny reflective glass beads. Yep, glass balls. The idea was basically to replace the ice's mirror effect. The beads would bounce sunlight away, keeping the ice colder for longer. The plan is being tested by a group of scientists working with the Arctic Ice Project. They say the glass balls are made of a material that's safe for animals. They even claim birds use similar materials to help them digest food. The glass used in these microspheres is the same material used in lab equipment and light bulbs. Sounds safe, right? Well, not so fast. There's also the environmental risk. These glass balls are tiny, and they could easily get into the ocean, impacting everything from fish to plankton. We still need more research to understand how this material breaks down in the ocean and whether it could affect marine life. But where things get really crazy is when we start talking about scaling this up. To cover just a tiny fraction of the Arctic, they would need millions of tons of these tiny microspheres, and that's just for starters. And they'd have to be working 24-7 through freezing temperatures and snowstorms. The scientists believe this could help keep the ice thick enough to survive summer and even slow the melting. But can it really work? Then there's also the Bright Ice Initiative, founded by the same folks behind the Arctic Ice Project. Instead of focusing on the Arctic Ocean, they want to use the same glass microspheres to restore glaciers. They've even tried this out on a glacier in Iceland. But experts are still skeptical. They say it could just speed up melting instead of reversing it. Now, another idea was cloud seeding with water particles. This would involve spraying ocean water into the sky itself. This would form clouds, and they'd reflect more sunlight. So, as you can see, some of these plans were too expensive, too complicated, or just straight-up wild. The real ISIS plan borrows ideas from earlier projects, but is much cheaper and more practical. Most importantly, it's working. But all this Arctic disaster is already affecting people. In the village of Newtok, Alaska, the land is disappearing. Each year, about 70 feet of the riverbank erodes, taking homes and history with it. That's all because of the erosion and the thawing permafrost. Now, these people had to move to a safer place called Murtavik, just 9 miles away. But it's a long and challenging journey. The relocation is taking years of planning, with New Talk residents already starting the shift in 2019. The new village offers better health and safety, but it's still a work in progress. Things like the school and grocery store remain in the old village, which makes things harder. Water and sewage systems are being set up, and for now, most residents are using a honey bucket system. But at least they have a chance to rebuild. It's still unclear whether these geoengineering ideas are a lifeline or a disaster. For now, we can just keep an eye on them. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.